Toni Morrison said, all good art is political. There is none that isn't. And the ones that try hard not to be political are political by saying, we love the status quo. This woodcut is by Kata Kollwitz. She was raging against the machine in Germany a century ago. As a college student, I saw a large exhibition of her work, and it changed me. It expanded my understanding of what art can be and do. It also made me wonder what it would be like to be an artist at a time of great consequence, a time when a fascist demagogue would unexpectedly rise to power, promising a return to greatness, scapegoating religious and ethnic minorities. And of course, <clears throat> that is where we are today. We have a choice as citizens and artists, resist or acquiesce. But I have jumped ahead 20 years and will take us back to 2000, the other time a president took office in spite of losing the popular vote. Everybody likes Bush. Um, I had just moved from Boston to DC. Like Colvitz, I wanted to bear witness. If there was a march, I went. This is a giant woodcut. Uh, of the highly charged World Bank IMF protest. I took the title from a Washington Post op-ed bemoaning hyperpartisanship. Uh, thankfully, we're over that. And uh, we can all agree that this is wrong. This brutality unfolded right before my eyes. It was the 4th of July, and a DC cop was beating a homeless Latino man senseless. My depiction of the onlookers, also immigrants, is a tribute to Colvitz. The onlookers are on the left and kind of ripped off her image there. Uh, I also witnessed and made images of sexual assault, gang violence, child abuse, and the fear that gripped the DC uh, region during the sniper shootings. That's what this is about. But the experience most relevant to my career and this presentation was time spent at the home of an emeritus professor at the University of Maryland. Dr. David C. Driscoll, who became a mentor to me as he has so many others, a great artist himself, he recognized the absence of people of color in museums and art history texts, and he sought to correct it through scholarship, collecting, and curating. Dr. Driscoll literally wrote the book on the history of art by African Americans. In fact, there it is. That's the book right there on the left. And on the right is Target Practice by Elizabeth Catlett, one of the contemporary pieces in a show that spanned two centuries. This was the telling of an untold story. Exhibitions teach us. The art gallery is a powerful platform. You can give the people what they want or challenge and teach them. When I was hired as York College's gallery director, I made this my first high profile exhibition. Dr. Driscoll's work in one space and his collection of legendary artists in the other. I was so proud. Not everyone was thrilled though. I was confronted by a person of influence who was very unhappy. And the reason given, I don't like black art. So acquiesce or resist. Resist, of course, because saying you don't like black art is saying you don't like black stories, culture, or people, and that is unacceptable. So I brought a powerful exhibition by Gordon Parks, who used his camera to fight racism and speak truth to power. And I paired him with contemporary troublemaker Hassan Alahi, and you should check out his uh, 2008 Colbert Report interview. Very funny. But what is black art anyway? Are either of these works black? These two gorgeous exhibitions at YCP were concerned mainly with form, but also questions of human existence. So why might one artist's work be labeled by their skin color, but not the other? Why don't we say white art? Well, I'm gonna do it. This next show is white art. Wayne White Art, sorry. I set myself up there. And Judy Fafard on the right, an LA-based pop culture icon and a New York-based MacArthur Fellow. Another part of my mission as a curator is to bring major art stars to York, to stretch our concept of what art can be, challenge us in new ways. I'm not always focused on social issues, but Often I am, and sometimes the artists with the most powerful voices are right in our own backyard. York's Joaquin Caius Guzman challenges audiences to consider issues of sexual identity and racism, while Lebanon's Adam Delmarcel forces us to look at the opioid epidemic and institutional complicity. Now this show I love so much. 2017 Guggenheim Fellow Jefferson Pinder. The man is a genius and a friend. This exhibition and performance proclaimed Black Lives Matter before it was a popular hashtag. The power of Pinder's work lies in his deceptive simplicity. The intellectual and emotional weight hits you as you're enjoying the form. Anybody see that? Yes. Awesome. Sue Coe is today's Colvitz. Her own comfort and success as an artist have always taken a back seat to the issues she is passionate about. This exhibition showed the horrors of the meat industry, a stance that can be isolating both for her and galleries that show the work, but it must be shown. 
We are eating our way to extinction, people. The purpose of this one, uh, this exhibition, was to urge action for justice and peace without glorifying violence, as so much anti-art ends up, anti, sorry, anti-war art ends up doing. We put together an international roster of artists and commissioned the mural above by renowned street artist Gaia that explored invisible boundaries in York. And it's, in, it's available, by the way. Um, uh, this show, when the steady boil of Islamophobia and the Republican Party spilled over in the form of Trump and his attacks on desperate refugees during the election, I invited Lebanese-American artist Helen Zagabe to exhibit this work, which told her experience of fleeing war-torn Beirut and eventually settling in Washington, D.C. It was so beautiful. Uh, this one, Hank Willis Thomas, uh, this show opened right before the women's marches, and it featured 100 years of advertising images uh, of white women, stripped of context, no logos, slogans. It was a strong visualization of the treatment of women over a century and the construction of whiteness and the marketing of beauty and violence. And that's totally self-indulgent right there. Um, you've all heard about this one, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what can I say? No, seriously, what can I say? Um, Paul Rucker's Rewind was a highlight of my career. A show that arrived at the very moment it was needed, less than two weeks after Charlottesville. Viewers were confronted very directly, and I Lost my place, sorry. Uh, finally, two exhibitions dealing with masculinity, one that just ended and one that just began. Chris Dacre's Man Up looked at how violence and militarism is marketed to boys. Kate Kretz's Common Denominator is an exhibition for the Me Too movement, a study of bully and rape culture. The most challenging exhibition I've hosted, and that says something. Forces a conversation we need to be having. I've run out of time and breath, but I want to leave you with one thought, sorry. Get a call with his contemporaries in Germany weren't evil, they just failed to resist. They were acquiescent and therefore complicit. Thank you very much.